Uh, you guys, today I am here with Tanya. She is Hi. one of my newest, but also most dearest friends. We've oh, got you. to know each other pretty well over the last few months, um, especially since she's moved here in January. Mm -hmm. um, today's video is going to be me interviewing Tanya um, so that you guys can kind of get an idea of what an expat is. An, a, someone outside of just my little group, my little channel, um, you know, her experiences and things like that, you'll be able to kind of get an idea of what other people are going through and what they've had to go through to get here, their experiences and why they chose to move to the Azores, um, specifically Trasada Island. Um, I, I did start to write some little notes here, um, but it got like as far as just a couple of things in the corner of the paper. Um, so I guess let's start with who you brought with you. Who, who all did you bring with you to live here on Trasada Island? Well, my husband is retiring and that is kind of what motivated our move but because we're a little older um like i have four kids and he has two kids but of the six kids only one is still um young enough to come over with us as a kid um so out of six kids one came with us permanently <laughs> and that's my son silver um my other son, How old is Silver? So, Silver is 17. Okay. And he's doing online schooling because okay. that worked best for him. He's neurodivergent and he's always kind of done alternative schools. Okay. And I'm making it seem like I don't know this information, but I know her son Silver and I also have a 17 year old and they've become quite good friends. Even before they moved here, they were chatting online and things like that. So. Um, that was here on so the island, helpful. Silver is Logan's best friend. Yeah, thank you. And I, I feel like my son Logan, who, you know, it's a little bit harder for kids to settle in and things like that. I think he was able to settle in a little bit more be once Silver came here. I think he felt a little bit more comfortable being on the island, knowing he has, you know, an, a, a friend from the United States who's in his same age group and really kind of on the same wave level for the most part as well, too. Yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, we, Silver chatted with Logan quite a bit and, like, he had a lot of anxiety about moving here and doing this. And Logan was able to give him kind of a heads up and he felt so much more comfortable Good. once he started talking to Logan. Good. I'm glad because, you know, as a parent in the back of your head, you're like, how is this going to affect the kids? And and often our kids don't always tell us everything, even though I feel like we communicate with our kids as much as you possibly can. I think there's children still kind of use a filter to a certain degree because, you know, in the back of their head, they're like, I always want to please my parents or I always want, you know, I don't want to add any extra stress to my parents. So that's really nice to know. I'm glad you told me that, that he was helping someone else feel comfortable with moving here. Um, that gives me a little bit of security as well, too. So I yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> My second youngest, uh, Lenny, also came with us when we initially moved here. He's also on the spectrum, but change is really hard for him. And so even though we, we offered to bring him with us, which would have been a little challenging logistically, but because he's on the spectrum, I probably could have made it work. Um, he didn't wasn't down for the change, so he <laughs> opted to stay with his father back in Portland, Oregon, which is where we came from. But again, the change was hard, so he came with us for the first three months, and that really helped all of us to kind of adjust. And also, it helped Lenny to feel like more like this is also his home, and he may be moving yeah. out here in the future. That's exciting because then Logan will have two friends that are around his age group that, that live out here. And her, her, her kids, her sons have also connected with my daughter as well too. I have a 15 year old daughter that you guys probably have seen on the <laughs> channel. Seen lots of my <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but I think a lot of people are going to want to know why, like why pick the Azores? Why pick Trasada Island? So can you share with our viewers why it was this special place that you decided to move to? You know, honestly, I always wanted to live in another country. Like, I used to, I'm older, so, you know, we didn't have the internet when I was a kid, but I used to write to pen pals. And I always wanted, like, I love other cultures. I always wanted to live somewhere else. And my husband and I had always talked about, well, when he retires, that we would go live in another country. And for a while, we were exploring this dream of living on a boat. Okay. And we actually bought a catamaran and I spent a year trying to sail it from 
the Caribbean to Portland, wow. Oregon. But um, there was a couple problems. One, the boating community is a lot more expensive now than I think it was maybe <laughs> 30 years ago. And it was so expensive everywhere we landed. Oh my goodness. And then we also po chose poorly. Our boat was a lemon. And it was Yikes. not safe. And honestly, I don't know if I would have made it if I'd gotten into the Pacific. Like, it, it the thing fell apart. So wow. um, we ended up having to kind of reconfigure where we were going to go when, when he retired. And... We didn't really have a place picked. And for a while, we were kind of thinking Mexico. Okay. Um, but then the town we were looking at. Sorry, look. What? The airplane. Yeah. I didn't know you could see. You guys yeah, have, that's the whole airport I will out share there. with you the view that we're seeing right now. Um, there's not a, a big light in here, but we're trying to get as much natural light as possible. And I'm sorry, you guys. The view is distracting. <laughs> I just seen one of uh, Sata, Sata's airplanes fly by her her window just now and I mean you can, it's far enough that you're not being disturbed by the sound of it but it was really cool to just see the the airplane and fly by right there um and I will when the interview's done I'm going to give you you guys know I like to do daily views or the view of that day and I cannot wait to share to share the view that she has from her new house anyways I'm sorry I interrupted <laughs> okay. you uh, please continue <laughs> yeah. it was distracting it is <laughs> so we thought about Mexico and we were literally like gonna fly down probably in a month and he was gonna check out the town and everything and then and then some friends I had living there told me a story about how some guy got hauled out into the desert oh and, and I was like this does not feel safe Okay. So then we were like, well, where are we going to go? And my husband was like, well, what about Portugal? And I was like, why did he say that? Like, what made him think Portugal? Because if you look retired to some foreign okay, country, okay. Portugal is always like what everybody okay, says, okay, right? Okay, it's like, okay. oh, Portugal. And I was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I guess. But, you know, my heart was like with the ocean. And I really wanted to do that boating dream. Yeah. And so Port I was like, well, okay, you know, there's all this part of Portugal that's, you know, close to the Mediterranean. That could be cool. And then I remembered when we were looking at boats, one of the boats we looked at was in England, and I was gonna have to sail it over to these islands okay. off of the coast of Europe. And I was like, are those part of Portugal? Mm -hmm. And I looked them up. And, the and, sure enough. and they were and then oh. I started looking at all the pictures and all the videos okay she found me you guys she found us <laughs> she found farm fam and new life Azores <laughs> through her searches and that's actually how we became friends yes so and I, I'm, I'm happy to reach out to to be able to reach out that was one of the goals of the channel is to really try to expose the island as much as possible this was in August of 2022 okay so we I were fresh it. we were yeah, we were still pretty fresh at that point in time. Yeah, she's one of the few first viewers then, huh? And that's when I started like really just like obsessing over pictures, videos, experiences. I was doing and the same thing. Everything so I saw was like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is, and everybody's like, why? Why do you want to live on an island? Why not go to mainland? Like you have easy access to Europe. All, of, but you know what? You were about that boat life. You were about the ocean. Yes, and you wanted to pass exactly. That around you. And if I want to go see mainland Europe, that's a quick flight away. And yeah. honestly, you know, where I lived in Portland, that was about the size of the island. You know how often I left the Portland <laughs> metro area? Yeah, we, I think we were definitely on the same wave. Like people ask all the time, like, how can you come from like a big city like San Diego and then move to like one of the sm smallest islands there is. Well, I wouldn't even say it's one of the smallest no. islands, but in their head, they, they think it's just this tiny little island. I um, mean, if you compare yeah. it to New Zealand. Yeah, right, I mean, right. right but, but it was so rare that we left, really, the city. It well, was, and I grew up in the country, too. I lived, okay. I lived a lot of my life out in, like, nature, and I had, I had farm animals and things growing up. So mm -hmm. this felt, like, so right. And so this... I don't know, and Rusty was like my husband got just as excited as I did. Oh, that's good. That's so good. everybody has to be on board with it. Otherwise, you'll end up risking someone coming out here and not being happy. And then that kind of just brings down the whole thing. And it, then you start to question like, you know, was this the right choice or was this not the right choice? So it's very important to have everyone on the same page. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you found, because she bought a house out here. 
um, and how like how you you know bought your house and you don't have to talk about prices or anything like that but okay. um, you know and and what made you pick this spot that you're in right now yeah which is in um, Praia you're technically in Praia right yeah it's Praia de Victoria it's in the kind of like county equivalent of Praia de Victoria the town is actually called Sao Brash. okay um, and the so, but when, when, I, when I got excited about the Azores, the first thing I wanted to do was find, like, what was the real estate like. Okay. And so that was how I found Idealista. Okay. And so then, like, I used to be one of those people who would, like, sit there and Zillow fantasize all the time. Okay. Now I was Idealista fantasizing I all see. the time. I was going through and looking at every possible <laughs> property, and we were considering three different islands. We were considering okay. Tercera. Sao Miguel and Fayel. Okay. okay. Um, mostly because we're older and we wanted hospital facilities to be on island. Um, You're not the only person that has said that so far. That's, yeah. That's a winning factor, I think, as well. So that's why we only considered those three islands. Um, and we decided that to make the final decision, we would need to visit. And so that's what we did. Like we decided that we were moving here in August of 2022. And in January of 2023, we took a three-week trip out of here. Oh, okay, okay. And so we visited... Um, During one of the coldest parts of the year. So if, if, if that won you over... Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, Portland is kind of temperate, but it gets colder there yeah. than it does here. It like does. We Sometimes it snows freezing spells. over there. Yeah. Yes, and I, in fact, when we moved here, they had an ice storm. Hit, literally oh. days after we left. And you were like, thank God we beat the storm. <laughs> Seriously, I was crossing my fingers and so worried before we left That's that right. it could I be a random that. ice storm. Oh. And it happened right after we left. I felt so fortunate. Okay. But yeah, so we came and we spent, I think, like four days on Fayel and like six days here okay. and then seven or eight in San Miguel. Honestly, I was really convinced that I was going to want to move to Sao Miguel because okay. I thought, well, it's got more community, more options, more restaurants. It's got a lot of beauty to it. Um, interestingly, when we came, I fell the most in love with Fayel. Interesting. Um, hmm. Fayel is very green. Yeah, There's a it lot is. of garden to it. And, and, and like different elevations and mm -hmm. wormholes and stuff like that. But yeah. I also think it was because it was smaller, I got more comfortable with where we were going and okay. I got like an attachment faster. Yeah, because you had that memory in your head of being, you know, already knowing where some of the places were and stuff like that. I can understand that. I liked Tercera quite mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I also felt like it was more practical. The house prices here were a little okay, cheaper. Okay. I was able to get more bang for my buck here, okay. which is probably ultimately the reason we chose Tercera okay, is because be of my house. Question. Yeah. The house that we found. Okay. Um, and secondly, it felt, even though I liked Fayel, it did not feel practical. The thing that's nice about Fayel mm -hmm. is that you can go to Pico or Sao Jorge on a ferry pretty yeah. much year round. Mm -hmm. And we did spend a day traveling over to Pico. I didn't like doing that. Okay. It felt, I felt like I didn't have a spot to be. I felt like. I see. And you can't just like, you have to buy the ticket. I'm leaving at this time. I'm coming at this time and I'm leaving at that time. You oh, can't just okay. like go back whenever you want. I see. So that was a stress factor for yeah, you to, be able added, to like make sure that you were there on time. Otherwise, you might miss. So it didn't very. feel fun. Okay. Pico, Pico is steep. Okay, okay. And so everything felt elevated. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it just had kind like you're of constantly anxious. walking up Mount Everest or something. <laughs> exactly, it just kind of had like an anxiety to it. But okay. So Fayel felt too small, and to be able to travel to the other islands did not seem that appealing. Okay. Tercera had a lot of the green, and it had bigger towns, and it had more options, and it had better housing. But of course, San Miguel has all of that, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. It didn't feel as friendly. It felt um, too big. It okay. felt too, I don't know. Did it feel touristy? Yeah, bit? it felt okay, a little okay. bit more touristy, okay. and it felt like, you know, there was some panhandlers there. I see. Okay. Things that I don't really encounter here. Okay. And okay. not that San Miguel was terrible. Yeah, I, there was no. lots of things I loved about right. San Miguel. Like some of the gardens there were just amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I definitely will love to go back there and visit. Yeah. But to live and have that be to live your possible yeah. homestead because, you know, she was tell Tanya was telling me that, you know, one of your goals is to possibly have a small homestead. Right? Yes. Is that right? And um, maybe we can take you take them around the garden. Sure. Yeah, it's like there's a lot of maintenance going on there right now. It's pretty rough looking. Yeah. There, nobody lived here before she moved. Well, no, they there. they did live here. Oh. The yard sat neglected for a number of years. Okay. So so the yard sat neglected for a number of years due to unforeseen circumstances to the family that lived here before. Mm -hmm. And um, you know things quite quickly get overgrown. You know if you're watching oh, yeah. any of our farming videos that within a week of rain everything is overgrown but I, I i mean if you don't mind i would no, like yeah, to take them on a small tour of your your yard space honestly it really, looked more fantastical really before we started the maintenance oh right it looked because like a jungle it right did. like a natural like jungle. Such a jungle and now um we we got some gardeners in who like trimmed the hedges really aggressively which they needed yeah but it looks it looks pretty rough yeah but you're, you'll still fall in love with it i promise you guys <laughs> so so really to more sum up the reason why you chose this house um tell us a little bit about that well honestly you know i've been going through all the houses and we had a pretty tight budget for it we couldn't come over here and just spend you know huge amounts of money on whatever uh house we wanted because you you can get up into prices similar to what you see in america and we weren't going to do that so yeah. i mean we're, we're retiring our, our budget's kind of limited um, but we found the house that had all these amazing features. Honestly, I don't even know how we got such a good price on it. To me, it feels the like it's worth beautiful. way more. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stone house on the bottom, which is like the authentic made out of stone with the really thick walls. But then they extended it. So it's a little bit bigger and it has a second story. Um, and the views, because it's up on the hill. So it looks out and I can see ocean. I've got literally like 180, maybe bigger than yeah. 180 view of ocean. And I look down into all the pasture and I can see the trees and I can see the airport. Yeah. And, um, and so then on the other side, she, you can kind of look up the island. So she's getting really the best of all of the worlds as far as the views go here, because again, you're up on, on a little bit of a hill. Yeah, it's a really nice spot that you chose. And it's caught a half acre of property with it. Wow, yeah. Um, which, you know, as I mentioned, I when I was in high school, I lived out in the country. I lived in Mariposa, which is outside of Yosemite in California. And it was Sierra Nevadas. We had like four acres. Okay. And we had horses and pigs and no, no cows, but uh, goat and ducks and chickens and turkeys okay. and geese. So, so like I have a certain amount of experience with like animals and you know raising um gardening and that sort of thing and i really wanted to be able to do that here and all this lush greenery and all the nice weather that doesn't include snowstorms mm -hmm. and ice storms <laughs> thank <laughs> goodness i couldn't imagine shoving shoveling the car out of the snow or scraping ice off your windshield like that was a factor for us too it's just pretty calm weather for the most part we get a lot of wind and you guys know we get a lot of rain but i'll take that over anything like i'll take that over snow and ice honestly and i've learned yeah. since we got here too that this is a sunnier part of the island like we actually do get more sun on average Interesting. it's also windier though like oh, okay. it is pretty windy here pretty frequently which also makes me very glad that i'm living in a stone house with yeah. a tile roof <laughs> Thank goodness. I think most of the houses are really stone stone houses. But they are. You know the story of the three little pigs. Yes, it's exactly. Like, it's a house made out of straw or wood. Which one would you choose? Which one would you guys choose? I mention that often when I'm talking to people who are interested in traveling over here. Some folks get concerned about earthquakes and things like that. I'm like, you're in a stone house. Like, you, it, you're the safest of the safe of the safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this house came with a half acre, probably only quarter of it is usable. I mean, part of it's the house and the, and all of that. And part of it's like the, the beautiful stone fences. Yeah. I have like four paddocks. Um, it's fairly small, but there are four paddocks of stone fenced areas in which I'm hoping to put sheep. She has big plans, you guys, mm -hmm. for that. And we'll, we'll, we'll keep you in touch with Tanya. We'll, we'll share some of her adventures along the way. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's going anywhere anytime soon. No, <laughs> we're planning on it. You know, it's funny when, when we get asked, uh, how you know, where are we can or are we staying? And we're like, yes, we're staying yeah. forever. <laughs> so I, I think that's going to be probably one of the last questions 
for you. Were there, uh, probably, I think I have two more questions. One is, how are you adjusting and how is your family adjusting? Now, she moved here in January, so it's May now. So mm -hmm. it's, you have a good four months or so under your belt yeah. at this point in time. So how, how is the adjustment then? You know, it's been a little interesting because... You, you come here and everybody talks about the economy being so much better and it is in some ways but buying things are so expensive everything's imported so you have to take that into consideration yeah and yeah. that's been a little bit of an adjustment i mean i can afford things but there's part i don't know there's like a reticence like yeah ooh, this yeah. is so much you still find yourself like picking the cheap the the lower cost item and things and and not just free freely spending everything. Yeah, I can see that. And yeah. you know, like I mean, somebody who like thrift stores a lot, and like oh, we don't have them that much out here. No, but Facebook not much. Market will take care of that for you. I found to out. Some that's extent. where to, that's where to go for the antiques and stuff like that. Yeah. But to a lot of it, it's like it's hard to find. Like I want, I want to get a rabbit touch. There's, you know, it's the marketplace is limited. There yeah. just isn't anything posted. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, knowing where to go to get things, too. Okay. That's an adjustment, definitely. But you've been really helpful with oh, that. Well, thank you. <laughs> and our expat group. Actually, it was, I mentioned before in one of my videos that it was Tanya who told me about the Traseda expat group. But if you guys are thinking about moving here, um, I think that's one of their rules is that you either have to be planning to move here in the future or have already moved to Traseda Island. Or have some sort of strong connection. Ties, like yeah. you were born here or you have a house right. here. Yes, or something. okay, there mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, check out the Traseda expat group. I will put the link in the description below. Um, it's on Facebook and it's really Traseda expats is the name of it. It's T-E-R-C-E-I-R-A, and then expats, of course. Um, but there's a small little questionnaire that you'll, you know, go through just like joining any other group on Facebook. Um, and then um, hopefully, you know, they'll expect you. But that group is continuing to expand, and I think they have over a 1,000 um, members, members yeah. now. Um, also, I just found out a little fun bit of information that they have, um, I think there's 5,000 oh, 5, plus foreigners that live on the island mm -hmm. a huge portion of that of course are people from the united states or let's just say america because that covers canada as well too um but that that group is continuing to grow and i want to say that um, well a lot of that population is because of people like you where people were born here on tercera yeah and then they immigrated out to america or to canada yeah. And then they grow up and they go, oh, I want to go back home. And yeah. they bring their spouses and they there come back. Go. There you so go. I was going to say, like me, I wasn't born here, but my husband was born here. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I yeah, see. And they bring their families. Yeah. So there is a lot of American culture here. Especially probably. because of the military base. Yeah, well, the too. military base. Mm -hmm. um, and because of all of the people who immigrated and then and frequently back. come back. Yeah. And even if they don't move back, a lot of them come back in the summer. Mm -hmm. So like there's all these specials here, right? Yeah. But a lot of this is because so many of the people are coming from um, the places they immigrated from and they're visiting. A lot of these are Portuguese people who have been living elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I think people kind of left searching for that American dream mm -hmm. to find out that the dream is really here <laughs> on the island. Don't be fooled, you guys. Um, but yeah, this is where it's at, seriously. Um, so so as far as, like, I, I hate to do the scale of 1 to 10, how much do you love being here on the island from a, on a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, 20. 20? <laughs> Absolutely. Aww. No, I had to take Lenny back um, after his three months were up, and I spent a week in... Massachusetts and I was like I want to go back oh, home <laughs> yes it was like leaving my warm comfy bed and stepping out into the cold cruel world it was, yeah I was so Aww. glad to be back home so you feel you feel this is your home now you yeah. settled in how are, really how's the community how are how do you feel like oh, you're kind I of love the people like good, my good. neighbor is wonderful all the people that we've interacted with have just been so kind and welcoming and really helpful um, I will say, though, that the other big stressor, which I think you've talked about before, of living here is learning Portuguese. Portuguese is not an easy language in general, and European Portuguese is even harder because yeah. they don't pronounce half the syllables and, and cut out most of the vowels 
and knowing which ones where and how they do it is and really then, hard. The accent changes from where you are. And then where we are here on Tercera, it's its own dialect entirely. Yes, yes. And so like learning it visually is even far more difficult than learning it auditorially. And I'm like, that's hard. Yeah. I, I think in that expat group, again, if you are someone like us who does not, do not speak Portuguese, um, and you're looking to learn Portuguese, they, in that expat group, they consistently share, um, like online, uh, websites or online, like, what would it be? There's like? even like one of the expats is doing lessons. And also yeah. there, there's a group for immigrants called AIPA, A-I-P-A. -A, okay. And they run every fall, they run like a four month free for immigrants okay. class that's very intensive. And I okay. I signed up for that. I'm doing that. Okay. This fall. And that's an in person class, right? <laughs> well another nice thing about the APA class mm -hmm. is that it does um, if you take it and pass it, it gives you the language needed so that you don't have to take the language test for citizenship. Oh, okay. Which I don't have to. Right. Yes. You don't have to worry about that, but yeah. my husband and I don't have any Portuguese in us, so if we want citizenship, we've got to do the whole process. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that there has been some times that I've almost given up on learning Portuguese um, because it is it is more challenging for me to, to, to learn. Um, but I have to remember that I'm staying out here permanently, so it's it's got to be a must. It's got to be something that I really start to focus on because I've lived here almost two years now. In August, it'll be two years. So, um, yeah, I think it's time to start learning <laughs> learning the language of the locals. Um, but I just want to thank Tanya for inviting us to her home. I think that was really special. I think a lot of people are asking some of those questions. They want to get to know expats a little bit more because they, they kind of want to put their, themselves in, in your shoes, if you will, mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of pick apart your brain and ask questions and stuff like that. So you guys feel free to comment any questions that you might have um, to Tanya in the um, comments below, because I will be sharing those with her and she's kind of in there too. So she might be able to see that comment before I can even get to it and answer um, first. <laughs> but um, yeah, feel free also to find me on Facebook under Annie Nova, A-N-N-I-E-N-O-V-A. -N -N um, the link of my Facebook will be in the description below, as well as, I'm sorry, I'm gonna plug this in right now, our merch shop, you guys. Um, right now, I wanna, I wanna kinda tell you guys a little bit. Um, I'm still working on getting like my ID and my Portuguese, um, I have the, my visa, but I don't have like a picture photocopy. So through, um, YouTube, I have not became a partner just yet. We did hit a thousand subscribers a while back in December. Um, but I am not a YouTube partner, so I'm not monetized by YouTube until I can go in and, and find somebody to help me to finish up all my paperwork and stuff like that. So there's been a little bit of a bump in the road as far as like identification and things like that. They are very, very picky with YouTube about, you know, who they're partnering up with and who, you know, who becomes monetized as well. So none of the funding, at least from the channel is coming to us just yet. So that merchandise shop is literally, if you guys want to help us out, um, anything that is purchased on the um, in the merchandise shop goes strictly towards creating more videos for you guys and expanding the, far the, the family farm as well too. So if you guys want to support us in any sort of way, we did try to start a Patreon group, but unfortunately you kind of have to be monetized in order to also get the funds from the Patreon group as well. And so again, right now, the only way that you can, if you wanted to, you know, some people are like, how do we send you coffee money? How do we send you, you know, um, gifts and things like that. And even the gifts are hard to get over here because you have to pay for the import tax and stuff like that. So again, helping out with that or purchasing something on that merchandise shop is a very quick and easy way. And it's the only way right now for us to get any um, outside funding really from, you know, doing the channel. Not at to this mention, point in time. Yeah. the art that Annie has put together on that is amazing. Thank it you. It is really Thank cool you stuff in there. very much. Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, it was her son, Silver, that shared the program with my son as far as like the digital art. So everything that you see on there is... Um, 
is digital art created by yours truly, Annie. And it's awesome, right? <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. But that concludes our video, you guys. Um, we're gonna take you on a quick tour and um, I appreciate you guys for watching and subscribing and liking our channel and following, especially the people that have been there from the very beginning and especially the people that have tried to become uh, one of our Patreons as well too. Everything's just kind of on pause. It's gonna happen in the future, but it is kind of on pause right now. So um, yeah, let's take you on that tour, you guys. I can't wait to show you the beautiful view out here. Okay, you guys, I promised you daily views. Check out these. So beautiful here. I'm gonna shut up so you can enjoy it. you guys check out her beautiful garden so many future goals here and ideas that she's creating all this has been chopped down from her landscapers but look at how pretty it is over here look at this so pretty so you're thinking herb garden over here yeah maybe a little spiral herb garden there Go up through the... And then she she took me on another tour through the property today and thinking about putting some raised beds over here. I think this is the perfect spot for raised beds. And this is her son silver spot. The whole property used to look like this because all of the hedges were overgrown like this. <laughs> and she's thinking maybe a couple of banana trees here, possibly, again, this is just I ideas so far, possibly um, an orchard, orchard mm -hmm. over there, which I think I'm, I'm like loving the idea so far. Mm -hmm. This place, maybe some farm animals. Yep. Well, I'm wanting sheep, but maybe starting out with pigs to kind of clear it out because there's a lot of invasive... Um, plants in here and it really kind of needs it's so pretty too. even all the weeds and like the invasive <laughs> plants are so beautiful they are you guys this is what you should expect when you come here especially if you're getting a yard space <laughs> like just have everything overgrown mm -hmm. it's so beautiful and so green like, some fruit trees. like that's an apple tree over there oh. oh over here is an apple tree yeah and this is a uh, pa not, not passion fruit um I don't know. Yeah. It's a fruit tree of some sort. It's a sort. fruit tree. And right now, all I smell is the mint. The mint is so yummy. You guys, smell a vision. Smell that. Mmm, <laughs> it smells so good. Yeah, this is a guava tree. Oh, a guava. Yeah. And there's fig behind us, too. And nasturtiums? Yep. Lots of nasturtiums. Lots of ferns. There's some, a lot of grapes, too. And another little spot here. Yeah. She has so much space. Pigs and sheep. Yeah. I and definitely want chickens. her to get the pigs in. If you guys know anybody on the island who will let her rent pigs for a couple of days to dig up all this. No, it'd be like a month. <laughs> oh, a month. <laughs> and all the bamboo that we cut down is starting to grow back. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. I saw your little pile of bamboo over here. And you know yeah. what I was thinking? Let's build a fort. <laughs> 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 but she picked a winner you guys oh you should bring them over to this view over here okay so she's saying check out this view Okay. You guys can't hear her, but she said, I think we should create a picnic spot right here. Oh my goodness. 
Wow. I see those fields over there. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready to plant something over there. Yeah. So what do you guys think of her spot? She picked a winner, right? I think so. There's a nice view over here. I think you did as well. Yeah. I love so it here. Lovely. I wake up to this every morning. Ah, she's so lucky. Granted, I've only been here four months, <laughs> but every day I just feel absolutely so lucky that this is my life now. <laughs> All right, you guys, but that, that concludes the tour of her backyard property. And every time we come back here, she's always finding something to pick. We pulled a tree out of the ground just a little while ago, and she was also pulling some vines as well. Thank you guys again for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. Bye for now.